I'm back, my friends, with a bit of a rant on making stuff on the internet. And I have two philosophies. I do one of the philosophies 95% of the time. I do the other philosophy 5% of the time. I call it make things people actually want. This is the simplest way I could encapsulate the philosophy I have for creating stuff on the internet. And you're gonna hear this little counter going off as a metaphor for what I'm talking about. Because why is that counter going off? It's going off because I'm selling copies as we speak of my third book that just came out in the Epic Gardening ecosystem, which is called Epic Homesteading. So what is the deal with making content on the internet, making creative things on the internet? I think like I referenced in one of my recent videos, you have two modalities. You have the creator modality, you have the artist modality. I am more of a creator modality because I'm trying to make stuff that you guys enjoy. When I say you guys, I mean the audience that is for that particular platform on that particular day at that particular time. So in a perfect world, if I could do whatever I wanted and had infinite resources, I would actually make slightly different content, even on the same topic, even in the same format across different platforms. Let's say I was on TikTok versus Instagram for my business, Epic Gardening. What I would do is I would actually realize, well, my demographic on TikTok is about 10 points more women than it is on Instagram. So there are more women on TikTok that watch me. They're also younger, right? And so I might change a bit of my lexicon. I might play a little bit to the meta game. If you're a fan of this channel, you've watched some of my videos on this channel, the meta game of that platform. And I might kind of shift that around a little bit to better relate to that group of people that is interested in what I'm talking about. And then I might also go over to Instagram, which skews a little bit older, a little bit less female, but still predominantly female. And I might change the jokes up a little bit. Now, do I have the resources to do that all the time? No, I do not. And if you're watching this and you're trying to make stuff on the internet, no, you probably do not. But it's a nuance. It's a little twist to thinking about this game that I think a lot of people miss. Now there's the other side of this equation, which is more of the artist, the you know sort of mystical creative. And if you're one of those, my personal view is you're doing that for you. So if you don't really care what anyone thinks about what you're creating and you sort of need it to get out, you need to express that vision, then at the same time, you really shouldn't care if no one cares about it, right? It's, it's not fair as just a general principle to create something purely for yourself and then be mad that people don't like it, right? So that's just not an alignment with reality. And so what I try to do is I'll do 90, 95% of the content that I create or the creative works that I make, I'm adding some flair, I'm adding some things that I really enjoy that I think make it better, but I'm doing it in service of the audience, all of the millions of people behind the screen that I'm currently looking at that I may never know in my entire life. And so what I'm trying to really do is think every second, am I delivering that value to you guys? And that can actually get exhausting. That's where I think, referencing one of my first videos on this channel that blew up, which is why everyone's quitting YouTube, that is part of why. That is part of why as these content creators age, mature, develop, they go, yeah, man, I just kind of don't want to hit that same bell a hundred different times in a hundred different ways. There's only so many ways that I can make that same piece of audience optimized content, but that is part of the business. So just like anything, everything becomes a job at some point in time. That's the creator side of things. That's where I think most younger creators, younger in the sense of your experience creating, not your actual age, that's where they all go wrong. I mean, everyone thinks somewhat selfishly, in my opinion, about their content. They go, oh, you know, the algorithm doesn't like me, or, oh, you know, I, I used to do better on Facebook than I do now, and now I don't do well. It's like, look, it's probably just because you're literally behind the times. You're behind the times. No one cares about the content that you're making anymore because it doesn't serve them because we all moved on to something else, right? You know, I know people who, after TikTok really kind of hit mainstream in late 2019 to 2020, I know people who did not get on it for two years after that and then complained in 2021, let's say, that, oh, everyone's watching short form video. Now it's like, dude, they've been doing that for two years. You just simply were stuck in your ways. And there's some sort of level of entitlement to what I see out in the creator space 
somewhat often, and it's usually from the middle tier of creators across really any category, I think you could say, is they figured it out to some degree, but they haven't figured it all the way out. And if they had, they may, they may be bigger, but you know that's a debate for another time. There's only so much room at the top, and that's just sort of a fen- fundamental structure of the way that these platforms work. But where I'm going with this is you simply have to be unselfish. What you're creating on the internet, if you want it to be consumed, you need to figure out what the people you want to consume it actually want to consume, right? Mind-blowing concept. It's almost like being someone who creates a TV show, right? I mean, when MTV came out with Cribs, they didn't say, we think Cribs is so cool and we don't care what anyone thinks and we're just gonna put it out no matter what. They actually thought about the audience. Why? Because they live and die on the consumption of that media and their ability to sell at the time, ad dollars, maybe some brand partnerships and sponsorships against that media. So when you're a creator and you know our business, Epic Gardening, isn't quite as much like this as other businesses because we rely more on product sales. But when you're a, a live and die creator on ads and affiliate deals and brand deals, you pretty much have no choice at scale to try to cater to your audience. Now, the one thing I'll say about this is you do have to be careful of what's called audience capture, and I will also introduce a term I call at least platform capture. So audience capture goes pretty much like this. Let's say on this channel that you and I are conversing on right now, I realize that all my videos on YouTube are doing really well, and that's actually the case right now. If you look at the history of this channel, the YouTube ones have done the best. So. If I was thirsting for them views, what I would do is I'd say, ah, you know, rebrand, you know, this is Kevin, the YouTube strategist, boom, new channel header. Mm, I'm talking about YouTube, dropping a course soon. I would do that because that is what is working. That's what you guys are telling me as a signal that I should be making more for you, except for the fact that I don't care about that on this channel and I just want to talk directly to this camera and by proxy to you and share with you some of my thoughts on basically the life that I've lived on the internet. And so to me, uh, I will avoid the capture of you guys, right? I, you will not ca- you not be capturing me. I'm not a Pokemon, you can't capture me, okay? So I'm gonna make my videos on what I wanna make. And if you don't like a particular one, that's totally fine. And I realize that's coming across semi-antagonistic, but the point I'm trying to get at is you have to be very careful to not allow yourself to fall into that sort of audience feedback loop and just give people more of what they want over and over and over and over again. You need to do it to some degree, but if you do it too much, you sort of become a content clown. Now, there's also something called platform capture, and that's just a term I don't think anyone else has said, so this is kind of my little terminology, but I could be wrong here. And it's basically this idea that When we go back to one of my earlier videos on predictions for YouTube in 2024, the metagame of the platform is different on every platform. So TikTok, you can do a lot more sort of edgy content, a lot more sort of absurdist content than you might be able to pull off on Instagram or on YouTube shorts or et cetera, et cetera, right? There's sort of a more youthful, absurdist, nihilistic vibe over on that platform a lot of the time. And you can allow yourself to play too much into that as well. So a way I'll bring this up is back in the early days of TikTok in 2019 when I got on, I was kind of participating in a lot of the trends. Actually, if you go back, it's super cringe. I won't even edit up some of the stuff that I did, but it was very cringe. And unfortunately, some of the like cringiest stuff I ever made on TikTok actually made it to Good Morning America and they like played it right before I went on live with Hoda and Jenna. And so I was like, oh my God, dude, like, that is the worst piece of content you could have picked. Like it wasn't even a viral piece. You would think they'd pick one that was actually good. Regardless, I was doing a lot of these different sort of trends and trying to jam my category plants into it instead of saying, how can I take plants and transform that world, that universe into this format and not necessarily play with the game of TikTok itself. And so once I started doing that, I really started to do a lot better on the platform because I was giving them what they wanted in a fresh and new way. Almost like an Instagram story, but with snappier editing, more jokes, a little bit more camera angles, changes, etc. And that tended to really work. And very quickly we became the biggest plant account on TikTok. And so that is a 
really interesting nugget I think that a lot of creators don't really think about is you can get sort of captured by the platform and you can kind of do what everyone else does. And if you do what everyone else does, going back to one of my predictions about 2024, you're not remarkable, right? No one will remark upon you. In my space, something I see a lot that I'm really sort of unsure why people do, but they do it nonetheless, is a no voice, minimal face, caption only music based short form. And so a lot of people in my space will do something where they're like walking in a field and they have some sort of hot take and they'll put that on the screen and they won't say anything and then they'll like have some seven paragraph caption. And to me I go, you're simply no different than the 100 other people that are doing that type of content. I can't, in my mind, I cannot categorize you as different to everyone else. Thus, I can't build sort of like an affinity to you. You're just one of the crowd. And that's ideally what you're not trying to be if you're trying to be one of these creators who's building an audience and serving that audience. Now, if you're just over here YOLOing it, being an artist, and you're like putting up whatever the hell you want, then that's totally fine. This advice doesn't apply to you. Some thoughts today, more coming on this channel. Been enjoying chatting with you guys on this. It's almost like a vent sesh for myself and hopefully it offers some value to you. Peace out.